Hello everybody, welcome back to Cures the Common Game. Today in deck number 614, we're going to talk about Cherix the Raging Isle. Charix? Cherix? Chari? Anyway, the Raging Isle. So for four mana, we get a 017 Leviathan Crab. I believe this is the first time we've ever actually seen a 017, which is pretty amazing. Now, I do want to like put this in a deck where um, uh, like toughness matters kind of deck, you know. But anyway, that's not this deck. It's a Leviathan Crab, because why not? Uh, spells your opponent's cast that target it cost two more. Kind of a little bit of built-in evasion. I mean, if they really want to kill it, they're going to kill it. But uh, it, it makes it last just a little bit longer. But here, here's why we're playing it, right? Three mana colon. It gets plus X minus X, where X is the number of islands you control. So this begs the islands matters theme, right? Because you want islands, you want to get islands into play. And you want to uh, uh, activate this. Now, the perfect live in the dream scenario is eight islands. And then you can activate it twice, getting it to a 16-1. Now that is a very, very risky business there having a one toughness commander that you've dumped a, you know a significant amount of resources into um but i have actually had a chance to play this deck and um you know shadow rift is a heck of a magic card uh, played against uh uh here in the room this past uh weekend and i was able to 16 do 16 commander damage. I'm sorry. Crabmander damage. <laughs> you know, and draw a card, because why not? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a bunch. It it happened way quicker than I thought it should. Um, so, I'll show you how I built the deck. Now, there's not a whole lot of creatures in this deck. This is a one-trick pony. We are getting in there with our Crabmander. And... It is all about trying to find ways to sneak him into the red zone and not have him blocked or whatever. Now, obviously, we're going to have a, um, a Rogue's Passage for that unblockableness. We've got a Soaring Sea Cliff to give it flying until end of turn. Um, fish Liver Oil to give it Island Walk, because, you know, why not, right? Um... Leap it gains flying to end of turn and draws you a card. And because it's me and I realize leap is significantly better than jump, I had to put a jump in there. I mean, you know, it's me, right? Um, vanishing is going to protect it uh, from random board wipes or targeted removal. You can just whoop. No, I'm I'm out. <laughs> um, of course, Levitation gives all, all your creatures flying, which we don't have a whole lot. And then uh, the Anti-Magic Aura, because those enchantments that put your commander in play but useless, you know, turn it into a tree or whatever, uh, yeah, those are really, really good. So, uh, further targeted by instant sorceries and enchantments. Really like that. So, let's get into our ramp. Uh, there's probably more ramp than normal in Mono Blue because, you know, our commander's not, you know, the whole thing is get out there quick. So, we've got a Silver Mirror and a Sea Scryer. Sea Scryer, uh, I mean, this is not bad. Two mana, one, one taps for a colorless. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Unstable Obelisk. Of course, we got our Soul Ring, Mana Lift. Now, I've got the Mana Lift in there because it does produce a blue. Uh, Bonder's Ornament kind of doubles. Uh, Ergolem's Eye, Opaline Unicorn. But Walking Atlas does some work here because um, it's all about getting islands into play. And, you know, we've got our myriad landscapes that's going to go get two islands. We have 
solemn simulacrum that's going to, you know, just smack an island right then. Uh, Dreamscape artist. I'm telling you, I think this card's better than everybody gets it credit for. Uh, we play Harrow in a lot of green decks, right? This turns every potential card you draw into a Harrow. It, I mean, it, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Well, I guess it's only got one more non-basic. Got Temple of the False God because we're going to have lands. And I know this is an Islands Matter deck, so this may be, it may be wrong. I, I don't know. Uh, we have a Heartstone to reduce the cost of Cherix's ability. This may not... May not stay because... Cherix is our only... Well, we have a Spark Hunter ma a Masticor because, I mean, I've got a lot of removal, but this is kind of, you know, Planeswalker hate, obviously. Um, I mean, it, technically, it's got an activation cost, but... Eh. Then we have Guile. Now, Guile was kind of an afterthought. Uh, Guile's not in there for the beats. Guile is in there because I looked down. I knew I was going to go creature light because I wanted a lot of things to... And I ended up with a lot of counters. So that's why Guile. But let's look at our little bit of Islands Matters. There's there's a few creatures here. Uh, Tempest Gin. Uh, I mean, this is a great card for Mono Blue. And especially when we are focusing in on Islands. So... Uh, Stormy, Stormtide Leviathan. Now, yeah, without flying or Island Walk, can attack. This kind of, that's another reason why I, I was led down the fish liver oil. Uh, Floodgate. Wow. Okay, if it gains flying, you bury it. So if you've got levitation out, this is just a four mana sorcery. Um, or, or you can jump or leap it, what have you. But when it dies, each non-blue creature without flying takes some damage. And obviously, since we're playing Islands Matters, one damage for each two islands, that's a bunch. Uh, Scourge of the Fleets, Serpent of the... Now, Spreading Seas is a card that I actually looked for in the deck and cards like it. But I just... I didn't have a Spreading Seas and... When I saw that I didn't have that, I was like, yeah, I'll probably use those slots for something else. But then we have, you know, the Quicksilver Fountain, which, yes, at end of turn, if all lands are islands, you know, you remove all flood counters from them. In a four-player game, this is hardly going to happen. They have to make something an island, which can mess up a whole lot of decks. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's do some card draw. Uh, we have good old Jace, because, you know, that's just what he does. He draws. Um, Ponder, Jace's Ingenuity, Factor Fiction, Seer Sundial. I figure Seer Sundial here, because, I mean, it's not a landfall deck, but we are going to have, number one, we're going to have islands in it. <laughs> Entering the battlefield to trigger landfall. And number two, we're probably going to have a whole lot of islands so we can afford to pay that too, right? That's my logic. Chart, of course, is pretty good. Y'all know I love some future side. And then... Uh, now these... God, I, I'm still looking for the good word for them. Um... Bland on one side, spell on the other. I mean, I do kind of like these. I'll admit that I'm not as picky about them as I am. If this didn't have a land on the back of it, I probably wouldn't pay it. Pay three for it. You know what I'm saying? I probably probably would not make the deck. You, you look at the top six, you get an instant or sorcery, put it in your hand. So it, it's a... Uh, compared to Impulse, you're looking at two more cards... You can't get any cards. You just have to get an instant or sorcery. And it costs three. I mean, but it's got a land on the back. And I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
with some of their random cars. Shark Typhoon, because you know, why not, right? Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, we don't have a whole lot of creatures, so we get flying tokens. Why not? The rest of that for this particular deck, probably not going to matter, because we wanted to play. <clears throat> Got a medal, just because I love how many... How many times does this, does this use the word target? One, two, three, four. Target, 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 target. You know, and it's got a Velociraptor in the art. Who doesn't love that? Uh, relearn, you know, probably going to need that. Stolen identity. Um, creating a token that's a copy, and it ciphers. Now, the cipher mechanic was not that amazing. But, because you encode it on a, yeah, and encode it on a creature. So when the creature deals combat damage to a player, you get to cast a copy of this. So you get another token, you know, of target artifact or creature. I like the fact that it's artifact or creature. Uh, <clears throat> here, let's do some bounce, shall we? Got a boomerang, because, you know, it's pretty good. Into the royal. Unsubstantiate. Etherize and part the veil. That's my bounce. Which blue has this very unique thing about bounce can help you. It can set your opponents back a couple turns. I, I mean, I I really really like the the versatility, right? So let's look at our removal first. We're gonna do like the counter magic. You know, we have negate, spell pierce. Rewind, Mana Leak, not enough players play Mana Leak in this format because we don't play around it. We as players don't play around it. We don't play around the pay. I mean, we tap out all the time. How many times have you gotten that last land you need? You're like, ah, now I can cast my commander. And you tap out to cast your commander. Hmm. Uh, Essence Scatter, Hinder. I love the fact that hinders have gotten so cheap. Um, but then there's another aspect of blue removal, right? Control magic. You just take it. It's actually probably some of the better removal because, you know, you're minus a creature, I'm plus a creature. Granted, I'm out the, out the stealing card like control magic or persuasion, legacies allure, Mind control, confiscation coup. Oh, oh, I forgot a counter. The Juari Disruption. Uh, I, I mean, here again, would we pay two mana for a four spike? Probably not. But when we've got the option to have a land, I actually played this. I drew it, played it, it worked. I, I looked over, it was tapped out, and I was like, uh, okay. Uh, turn to Frog. Decent. But now, Oh, I know I've talked about this before, but Fade Away is one of my favorite blue board wipes because it's a blue board wipe. Um, like I said, people love to tap out. Uh, and now granted, Power Sync w w works with it very well. And I, if I had thought about it, I probably would have run a Power Sync in here because um, Power Sync is, forces them to tap their lands. But... You would be surprised at how many times Fade Away can be at pretty close to a board wipe. Especially if somebody is generating obscene amounts of tokens or, you know, have, have just tapped out for that giant spell. I love Fade Away. But nowhere near. The last card we've got here is Flash Flood. Now, it is a one mana blue instant that says destroy target red permanent. Wow. Yeah, you can bounce a mountain. We're hardly ever doing that. Uh, but destroy target red term permanent on a blue instant for one mana. This is good. I, I drew it. I used it. This is, I mean, there is a possibility you sit down in a pod with no red players. I mean, that's, that's going to happen. But it doesn't happen a lot. Now, one thing to remember... Um, there is a rules distinction between color and color identity. Like the new Tazri is a white card. 
but it has a five color color identity. And uh, I've noticed a lot of players will, that line gets grayed a little bit because they think since it has a five color color identity, that it's a red card when actually it is not because a card's color is defined by the mana cost in the upper right corner. So, um, but color identity is determined by symbols on the card. Hence the reason why Tashri is five color. I don't, yeah, that's y'all already know that, but I don't know why I felt the urge for that rant, but, um, that is Cherix. I had a ton of fun playing it. I think I played it twice. Uh, I won a game with it. Um, uh, against Danny and Chris. Um, and then after that, they were, I played it again, which was probably a mistake because they were both determined that I was not winning with the crab again. <laughs> Can't say that I blame them. Uh, but that is 614 going over to the wall. And I didn't put the camera over far enough, but you know, you get the idea. Um, but that is it for today. I, I, I do appreciate everybody watching, liking, sharing, commenting. I, I love the comments. And feel free to make upgrade suggestions, what have you, because there will come a day in time when I actually get this project done. Well, I say done. Uh, I'll be caught up until they release the next set of Legends, right? You know. Um, so there will come a day when I get done and I can go back and start tweaking, upgrading to whatnot, because some of these decks over here in like the first block, you know, I did those, what, four years ago? I showed you all those three, four years ago. So yeah, you know, cards have come out, cards are more accessible, whatever. But yes, so uh, um, I do appreciate the comments and the, the suggestions because that's where I, I, I go to when it's time to rebuild the deck. I, I, I go there because, you know, our collective hive mind is way better than just mine, right? But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. Thank you so much. But right now, we're going to shuffle and cut.